Now the starters calling them forward. They're under orders, and away they go. In the 2005 John Smith's Grand National, spot the difference is the first away on the outside from Merchant's Friend, and up there too early is Colonel Rayburn for Paul Carberry. Double honour is showing out with Astonville, and also there on the inside, Bindari. Further back as Native Emperor as they run over the Melling Road, head towards the first of 30 fences. We join Ian Bartlett. So they funded our defence number one, double honours, just about the leader from Colonel Rayburn. Lord Atterbury, French Woods Creek are both fallers at the first fence, so Lord Atterbury down. French Woods Creek is a faller as well, and those are the only two who fell at the first. Bindari, Colonel Rayburn, double honour, Glenelly Gale, Astonville. A bad mistake there as well, but it looks like it from risk excess up. As they head down out of the open ditch, Glen Eddy Gale in the black, leading from double honour, Colonel Raymond Astonville, Bindari, Montes, Parson, Jakari on the outside, and they have all got over that. We have a fallen before that, which is Bally Cassidy, who went before they got to the third fence. They're getting now over the fourth. Glen Eddy Gale is the clear leader. A few mistakes at the back of the field, but most appear over it as we join Tony O'Hare. Coming to the fence before Beatrice, Glen Eddy Gale in the lead, followed by Astonville in second. They're followed uh, on the inside, over it by double honour, and just behind these out wide is strong resolve. Colonel Rayburn is towards the inside, coming down towards Beecher's Glen Ellie Gale with a clear advantage from Astonville. Then towards the inside, double honour. They're followed by uh, Forrest Gunner making a forward move. And Glen Ellie Gale picks on landing over Beecher's but uh, survives it. And uh, bad mistake there by Europa, but they're all safely over and coming out of the Foyne Haven. Glen Ellie Gale, double honours in second, Astonville in third, Colonel Rayburn behind them, Forrest Gunner is next, then Monty's pass. Strong result wasn't too good at it. On the inside, Hedge Hunter. And then Neil Desperand and Merchant's friend, Clan Royal in mid division ahead of Fonmore, then Ad Hoc. And behind these, towards the outside, is Inox as they come to the canal turn. And the leader, Glenelli Gale, double on over second. Colonel Rayburn takes the third. Hedge Hunter jumps up on the inside in fourth place as they turn now towards Valentine's, mistaken the back by Native Emperor. But at Valentine's for the first time, Glenelli Gale from double honour, Colonel Rayburn, Monty's pass, Forrest Gunner, Hedge Hunter, then Merchant's friend as we join Darren Owen. Making their way to the tenth, and it's Glenelli Gale who's making the running Native Emperor unseated its rider back in the field at Valentine. So this is fence number 10, and it's Glen Ellie Gale being chased by double honour. Then Monty's pass, mistake there from Hedge Hunter. Merchant's friend was a casualty back in the pack as they go on now towards the ditch, and it's Glen Ellie Gale being chased by Monty's pass, double honour, Clan Royal, Astonville. Strong resolve is not too far away as they take the open ditch. Uh, back in the field is Inox being chased by Ad Hoc. Hedge Hunters to the inside, and then further back to Neil Desperandum, followed by Take the Stand, Fon Mortis next, then Justin Death, simply gifted, and then Jolly Bay Foley Pleasant and after this one as it takes time as they jump the fence before the Melling Road and it's Glen Ellie Gale who's making it with Clan Royal to the outside looking very keen for Tony McCoy break then a three lengths to double honour being chased by former winner Monty's pass then the great for Scotland that strong resolve just in debt is to the outside they thunder across the Melling Road they're on the race course proper and it's over to Jim McGrath it's the leading amateur leading the champion jockey as they run now towards fence number 13 in the Grand National it's Tom Greenall out in front here on Glenelly Gale, his first ride in the race, 20-year-old Tom from Tony McCoy, who's bidding the win the race now at his 10th attempt. Then in third is uh, just following Clan Roller's double honour. Further back is Monty's pass in fourth and further back in the field then strong resolve as they head up now towards the 13th. They're stretched across the track. Inox is not that far away. Take the standers there as well as the leaders jump it well. Jolly Bay is back in the field. Forrest Gunner for carry Ford, the big white face in the centre just preceded by ad hoc as they come now to the 14th Glenetti Gale on the inside of Clan Rook clears it well from double honour in third they're followed by Colonel Rayburn and Hedge Hunter and further back then is Monty's pass they're followed by Inox and Forrest Gunner for Carry Ford right up there in about eighth position they're followed by ad hoc and out wider is strong resolve as they come now to the chair and leading over at Clan Rook got through on the inside to lead there from Glenelli Gale the faller is take the stand as they head now towards the water and it's Clan Royal and Glenelli Gale together, four lengths to double honour as they sail over it, then Colonel Rayburn followed in uh, fifth position by Hedge Hunter, strong resolve hit that very hard and lost ground Monty's passes further back in about sixth position, followed by Carrie Ford on Forrest Gunner, just in debt 
They're followed next in the field by Enox out wider. Further back is Ad Hoc from uh, Fonmore and Heroes Colons. Royal Eau Claire from Simply Gifted. Further back in the field, Jolly Bay. Next is Is No Good from It Takes Time. And they're followed by Strong Reserve. 32 still standing. Folly Pleasant is next from Europa. Marcus de Burley is next from Binderie. And further back is Amberley House. Then Nil Desperandum. As they head now towards the 17th, we rejoin Ian Bartlett. Risk access and went at fence number two, but Clanroy continues to lead him as they get over it from Hedgehunter on the inside of Glen Ellie Gale and Monty's pass and Inox behind these. Nakudra is really struggling at the back of the field as Clanroy is over the 18th safely in front. The tail end is getting over it now. Ballybur Rush as well behind, so is Lavon Chospit. The difference, Jakari and also Lakudre, but Clanroy five clear at the 19th from Glen Ellie Dale. Then came double on a Colonel Raven, Inox, Jolly Bay, Montes passing behind that is Hedge Hunter, then Justin Dent, Royal Oak Claire. Uh, look, they come over the, the back of the field there. Lacoudre is the back marker as Jakari was pulled up before they took the 19th. The leaders are getting over the next one safely. There's one fell further back, but here's Terry O'Hare. Coming to the fence before Beaches, and Clan Royal is the leader being followed by uh, Glenelly Gale and their two double honours gone. Double honours have fallen there as they race on towards the Beaches Brook Clan Royal, the leader. Hedge Hunter on the inside in the centre, well, Glen Ellie Gale with Colonel Rayburn. Out right is Jolly Bay and the uh, Loose Horse causing problems uh, up front and they've gone right across. Cl uh, and Clan Royal is out of the race, they've stopped him. Uh, Clan Royal out of the race, knocked out of it by Loose Horses. Ad Hoc was a faller and uh, they're out over Beaches now. These stragglers just getting over Ballybuck Rush and refused at the back. Hedge Hunter has slipped through on the inside to dispute the lead over the Foy Navy with Inox. Behind these is Royal Eau Claire. And, uh, and just behind these, Justin Dett improved. And Ellie Gale is next, then simply gifted. Behind these, Heroes Collange, and then Forrest Gunner Monty's pass. Behind these, it takes time, and then comes Neil Desperandum and Europa, Colonel Rayburn and Fonmore, and then Strong Resolve as they go out over the clan turn, and Hedge Hunter is the leader. Followed in second place by Justin Dett, then Inox, then Royal Eau Claire. Behind these on the inside, Glen Ellie Gale, rising to Valentine's. Hedge Hunter with a four length lead from Justin Dett and Inox, and then comes Heroes Collange as we rejoin Darren Owen. Five to jump in the national and it's hedge hunter a faller last year who leads the charge down towards this plain fence in oxford france down the outside royal Eau claire and heroes colonger hunting up the pace red colors white cap of justin Dett simply gifted is creeping closer white face of forest gunner to the outside and here's one of the last big tests this is an open ditch and it's four from home and it's hedge hunter from jolly bay hedge hunter the leader justin Dett, heroes colonge in ox royal Eau claire jolly bay on the wide outside simply gifted is snapping up their heels then forest Gunner with the galloping mother, a uh, galloping mother there, carry four to the outside. Colonel Ravens out of the contest, they jump three from home as they head on towards the Melling Road. And it's Hedge Hunter who leads, being chased in second place by Inox. And then Heroes Colonge is next. Ben Eddie Gale is out of the race, just in depth up the inside. Forest Gunner's got a few lengths to find. It takes time, is creeping into the race as well. Von Mort has been pulled up before the third last. They're on the race course proper. It's Hedge Hunter, that's the one to catch over to Jim McGrath. Any one of ten horses could win the John Smith's. Grand National here as Hedge Hunter leads them there. Now with two fences left to jump. In second, Heroes Colonge. In third is Inox. Starting to get closer as Polar Red on the outside. A rank outside of Justin Dent behind them. Carrie Ford has had a magnificent ride here on Forest Gunner. They come up towards the second last. Hedge Hunter for Ruby Walsh. Three links in front of Inox and also there is Polar Red. Justin Dent the inside from Grawler Claire and simply gifted. Forest Gunner coming there strongly on the outside. The big white face. Neil Desperandum is next from Heroes Collage. They've got one fence to jump in the National. It's Hedge Hunter in front from Royal Eau Claire. Simply gifted and in odds just behind them. But Ruby Walsh has sailed over the last in front on Hedge Hunter. He's four lengths clear now. Royal Eau Claire simply gifted. Kerry Ford is trying hard on Forrest Gunner. In is behind them from Neil Desperandum. They're at the elbow in the National. Ruby Walsh is going strongly. He's out in front of He's six lengths clear of Royal Eau Claire and simply gifted. And Ruby Walsh is going to win the John Smith's Grand National on Hedge Hunter. Fell in the last last year, but too good for them this time. Hedge Hunter wins it, a second Grand National for Ruby.
second was Real O'Clair, third is Simply Gifted, fourth is his stakes time. In fifth place, Carry Ford on Forest Gunner. What a ride. They're followed by Neil Desperandum, Inox, Heroes Collange. Further back then is Justin Dead, Amberley House, Bindery is no good. Polar Red, what a race he ran. Jolly Bay got very tired from Levanture, then Monty's Pass, strong resolve. Further back, spot the difference, Arty Copper. And further back, second last, Europa. Last is Shama One. This is the second win in this great race for Ruby Walsh. What a horseman he is. He settled that horse on the first circuit. A bit of luck came when Clan Royal, that incident out there in the country, was going so well. And then with a loose horse in front, all sorts of mayhem. We'll have another look at that later. That was at Beaches at the second time. Willie Mullins, a triumph for him from one of the great Irish racing families. And here he is, Willie. Look at him. He's, he's so... He's out of breath. He's so shocked. He and his wife, Jackie. A magnificent cry, triumph for them. He does so well with his horses. He's handled many, many good horses over the years, but a thrill, the pinnacle, to win the John Smith's Grand National. And the owner, Trevor Hemmings, he's been dreaming of this day all his life. The man who owns Blackpool Tower, reputedly worth 730 million and here are the prices hedge hunter the seven to one favorite has obliged in the national second royal clear at 40 to one third simply gifted 66 to one and fourth it takes time at 18 to one and fifth was forest gunner carry forward what a magnificent ride she gave that horse it was an absolute gem. She had him up there all the way. She was well there in contention with two left to jump. Forrest Gunner, he battled on. But uh, if you back carry forward with, uh, on Forrest Gunner, uh, just check with your bookmaker whether they were giving five places. Some firms were. There she is, coming back. We think 20 finished, but we'll confirm that later. Carry forward. Here she is. Coming back after that magnificent ride on Forest Gunner. She had him right there with a chance. But let's have a look at the winner, Hedge Hunter. He fell at the last last year. He was in third place. He was beaten at the time. He'd run a bit too keenly on the first circuit. But this time, Ruby was able to just slot him in behind, to get him into a rhythm, to hunt him round on the first circuit. There he is, shaking hands with everybody. He's a, he's a really good entry jockey, Ruby Walsh. He's won it twice now. And uh, this was only his fifth... Uh, this was only his fifth ride, Ruby, in the, in the National. He's won it twice. And uh, he's done extremely well. Trevor Hemmings had two, uh, two runners in the race. Europa was the other one. And I think Europa was the last to finish. 20th and last, but we'll confirm that later. Now, the stable lass who does uh, Hedge Hunter is from Finland. I don't know her surname, but it's Mia, uh, her first name. And she looks... Mia, Mia Nimella is her name. And look at Ruby. He can't wait to celebrate. What a day. Absolute gem of a ride. I would say that if you asked him, put a gun to his head, if you put a gun to his head and asked him, he'd say, well, I didn't really want to go on as early as I did. But this horse was, uh, this horse was in a real rhythm, uh, and they just had to let him go when the race changed complexion of beaches the second time. What a win, what a triumph. And there's Ted Walsh, father of the winning jockey, coming over embracing the rider and uh, what a family they are the Walshes great racing family from Ireland Ted Walsh of course trained Papillon Ruby's first winner this is his second we had eight jockeys in today's race that had won this race previously Ruby Walsh was one of them
Here he is coming back, his second. He joins Carl Llewellyn. Among the present day jockeys who won the race more than once. Distances 14 lengths and ahead. For betting on distances, 14 lengths for winning margin. There's Mark Bradburn and Lord Atterbury coming over to congratulate Ruby Walsh. And there's no disguising his delight after this fine victory. And Hedge Hunter has been a remarkably consistent horse and full credit to his trainer Willie Mullins who's set out to win this race from the time that horse hit the floor at the last fence last year. He was aiming at this race this year. He gave the horse five runs over hurdles. And then his last run before this was in a, a chase, which he won. And here is Willie Mullins, the winning trainer, coming over. Congratulations to the rider. A kiss for the horse. And uh, he's had some many, many good horses. He has one of the leading stables in Ireland. Florida Pearl, one of his great, uh, one of his great horses. Now, officially, there were 21 finishes. And the last horse to finish, officially, was Shamawan. So, 32 Shamawan was the last horse to finish. And 21 completed the course. Europa finished 20th. So, coming back into this unique winner's enclosure, which will be used for the last time today. They're going to save this uh, construction. We'll have a look at it soon. There's Paul Nichols coming over. Ruby Nichols, uh, Ruby uh, Walsh rides for Paul Nichols very regularly. But this uh, unusual structure, you can see them entering now, the winner's enclosure. This will be kept and will be used as a museum. But be a, there's Trevor Hemmings, the winning owner. He has fulfilled a lifetime's ambition today. This uh, very, very wealthy man fulfilled a, a lifetime's ambition to win the Grand National. He owns Blackpool Tower, and uh, he's bought many, many horses. All of them, everyone who buys a horse for him is told they must look for a horse with a scope to one day go over these big fences at Aintree. And that's exactly what they found when they found Hedge Hunter. A horse who not only had that ability, but also the heart to take him over the 30 fences and to complete four and a half miles at the highest level. An excellent performance, and look at him. Doesn't he look a fresh horse? He's finished a fresh horse. Magnificent performance. And there they are in the winner's enclosure. Ruby Walsh now posing for pictures and an emotional moment for the whole family as uh, this Grand National victory means so much in racing there are better races that's for sure but this is a part of history a part of sporting history as uh, coming forward Irish well wishes coming forward to uh, greet this very popular winner who went off the seven to one favorite who was available at ten to one last night and uh, here we see the horse coming forward now.